Hi everyone, I welcome you once again to our series of this discussion on our financial instruments topic. Friends, what we have discussed so far is that to be able to use the amortized cost model, we need to meet two conditions. The one is of the business model and second is of looking at the recovery of these contractual cash flows as given within the specifications of the standard, the contractual terms of the financial asset give rise on specified dates to cash flows that are solely payments of principal and interest on the principal outstanding. Now, this is one uh, you know condition which which requires a detailed deliberation, detailed discussion to understand what is the implication of this particular paragraph here, right? In a, in a very simplified manner, if I if I try to bring some examples on this, uh, I would say, let us say the company X invests in debentures of company Y. The investment is let's say $10,000. Interest is let's say 6%. The duration of the term is let's say 3 years. All right, let's say the interest is received in arrears, which means at the end of each reporting date, at the end of each year, the interest is received by company X. It simply means this this basic arrangement is, is you know, that you have made an investment of $10,000. At the end of year one, you receive $600, year two, you again receive $600, year three, you receive $600 plus $10,000, right? If you try to connect on this particular paragraph requirement on this case we are saying that the terms the contractual terms the agreement is like this it gives rise on specified dates end of year one end of year two and end of year three cash flows that are solely payments of principal and interest so the principal is recovered interest is recovered as well right very classic basic example of recovery of principal and interest on the principal outstanding right quite straightforward nothing nothing much to worry about as far as this kind of categorization is concerned right so straight away this kind of a financial asset meets this condition and assuming that the entities objective to hold this uh, you know uh, financial asset comes under the business model to you know collect contractual cash flows this is how it is going to be right so the cost model will be applied in this scenario okay again just to look at the accounting part of it it should not be difficult for us to you know refer to what we are doing here is on day one we say debit investment Credit bank ten thousand dollars year one end debit bank because we have received the interest credit interest income six hundred dollars right this would be the case not just year one but also year two and also year three right each of the years you receive this money and it comes in your books at the end of year three the recovery of principal is done as well the debit bank credit investment and ten thousand dollars is shown as the amount recovered right quite straightforward quite logical Let's try to bring some changes in this scenario here.
So let us say that now. Company X invests in Let us say zero coupon bonds of company Y. Okay, the investment is ten thousand dollars. Or let's let's change this number here. Uh, I'm just doing some some calculation here. So I'm going to use calculator for the purposes of explaining that, and then we can look at the logic also where I'm where I'm coming from. So let us say that I'm using this uh, value of okay so let's let's do this uh, 10000 divided by 1.1 to the power I don't know. Okay, so let's say that my investment comes to 6,000. I'm just taking a hypothetical figure. And let us say after three years, company Y pays dollar 8,000 to company X. Okay. So now this is a zero coupon bond. Let's even understand it briefly. What exactly is a zero coupon bond? Coupon means interest, right? A zero coupon means there's no interest paid during the period, okay? But then instead of paying the original amount, the original investment, of course, there's something additionally paid at the time of maturity. So this becomes, of course, $8,000. What we are looking, I mean, in an easy way, I mean, I may even say it's a fixed deposit, right? As, as a basic example here. So if I say that company X invests in zero coupon bonds of company Y, like a, like a fixed deposit, there is, you know, the relationship that you would notice here is that my, you know, initial amount multiplied by a particular rate for three years results into the maturity amount. Now, if I just replace these numbers, so 6,000 is increasing at a particular rate. That is that is where it is becoming 8,000 after, let's say, three years of time. Okay. Now, I may want to just solve it quickly. So, I may say 1 plus R cube is 8,000 divided by 6,000. This would be, of course, uh, 1.333 approximately that means that 1 plus r cube is 1.333 approximately or 1 plus r is the cube root of 1.333 so if i say that it comes to one plus r would be approximately one point zero zero six four that's what i see here that means that R is 0 0.10064 or 10.06 percent approximately okay now what we are what we are saying here is that this rate 10 percent approximately is the rate 
that turns my investment of 6000 into 8000 over 3 years okay let's let's try to do it briefly if i if i if i try to do it like this so so my schedule that i can try to make here is is like an opening balance year 1 that is 6000 there's an interest at the rate of let's i'm just taking an approximate 10 percent here without the use of calculator so this becomes 600 my closing balance because i don't receive this money this becomes 6600 year two the closing balance of year one becomes the opening balance of year two the interest income is 660 approximately I'll take this now this makes it to 7260 year 3 if I take 7260 and this is 726 so 7260 into 1.1 that gives me approximately 7986 since the interest rate is a little above 10% so this would come rounded off to 8000 we can of course do that approximation and you know come to that answer as well if we want to that is something which is possible so let's say if i were to do it for the sake of you know proving the point okay so we are saying that if it is 10.0064 percent we are saying it like this that my schedule would look something like this opening balance that is for the year one that is six thousand interest at the rate of 10.064 percent which means that on 6000 into 10.064 percent gives me approximately 604 that means that my closing balance now comes to 6604 we'll do the accounting after this this 6604 becomes the opening balance and on this 6604 I take again a 10.0064% 10 10 rate that gives me 665 approximately. So if I say 665 plus 6604 this gives me a value of 7269 year 3 this becomes the opening balance so 7269 again into 10.64 percent gives me 731 okay so i'm simply adding 731 to 7269 this tallies to 8000 now okay now think about it what we are saying here we are safely saying the contractual terms give rise to give rise on specified dates my date is specified at the end of the tenure does not matter if I'm not receiving money even during the period does not matter at all there is there's an outstanding amount originally this amount in earns some interest the principal changes it increases this principle again earns some interest this changes further and likewise it goes until the end which means what on specified dates i'm receiving cash flows which are solely payments of principal 6000 and interest on the principal outstanding so these amounts are coming to me as you know the the amount coming on the specified dates right so what 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 you certainly want to remember here is that it does not matter that you are receiving the interest on a day one monthly uh, you know quarterly half yearly weekly annually does not matter what really matters is that are you receiving that interest as per the date specified are you receiving you know that amount the cash flows which reflect the principal and the interest on that principal outstanding right very quickly doing the accounting entry here would not be challenging for us at all here we say
इनिशियल इन्वेस्टमेंट डेबिट इन्वेस्टमेंट सिक्स थाउजेंड क्रेडिट बैंक सिक्स थाउजेंड ओके दैट इज ऑन डे वन ओके देन आई हैव ईयर वन एंड लेट्स डू वन थिंग the recognition of interest income so debit investment i'm not receiving the money so the value of my investment increases the value of my principal increases of course like that i will create an interest income in the year 1 604 year 2 665 year 3 Seven thirty-one, right? The total investment increases from six thousand to plus six zero four plus six sixty-five plus seven thirty-one. I receive this entire amount at the end of year three, which means year three end. I would have debit bank eight thousand dollars credit. Investment, right? I may not have called it necessarily a zero coupon bond. I may have called it a fixed deposit. Also, does not make a difference at all. Comfortable on this? Quite straightforward, isn't it? So there are a lot of lot of financial assets where it would not be difficult to see these conditions being met, right? The business model test and recovery of contractual cash flows on specified dates that essentially represent. you know the, the the payment of the solely the payment of interest and prince uh, you know the principal and the interest on on the principal outstanding right but then of course as we as we began you know our discussion with saying that this requires a lot more discussion a lot more deliberation to understand as to what are the areas where the the amount recovered may not necessarily represent the recovery of interest and uh, you know and the principal for that matter right so we're going to talk about all these things in the series of lectures that we're going to do going forward right so keep watching these videos do subscribe to our channel and uh, all the very best for your preparation thank you very much have a good day take care